Hey everybody, this is Jen from Gar and Jen's Journey. Looking like a hot mess today because it's early in the morning and even before I really get ready for the day, I got stuff out in the garden I want to get done before the sun uh, gets up too high and the temperatures rise. I also figured it would be a good time to shoot a video. There's no wind today. Um, I haven't been able to shoot a video because there's been quite a bit of wind and you wouldn't be able to hear me over it. So <laughs> I figured I'd take this uh, time of the calm of the morning to show you guys what's going on in the garden. So let's go take a walk. All right, so we're in our container garden area and you can see how big these potatoes have grown and they're starting to flower. Very, very exciting. These containers are doing very well. Look at how big and tall and lush these carrots are. They're just gorgeous. Let's see if I can actually harvest one out here for you. Not too bad of a size of a carrot. These are Chantenay carrots. So they're a, they're a smaller carrot which um, grows best in the soil that I'm growing. But that's a beautiful carrot and the foliage is just wonderful. And they actually taste pretty good. I've been eating some of these here and there. So beautiful, beautiful carrot. <clears throat> and then I have my two different kales going on. I still have some lettuce over here that's uh, almost finished. And then I have some more lettuce here, uh, some safflowers. My mustards there have gone to seed. Um, they're really, really cool. You can see the little seed pods on them. So I'll be excited when I can harvest those for some uh, uh, mustards in the fall. All right. So I planted uh, some uh, bush beans in here with the collards. Uh, I had given the soil a good workup and added some fertilizer to it. It's really helped the collards take off a bit and the, the beans will be really happy with it. Um, you'll see that I added some funny looking mulch. This is actually animal bedding um, that I had extra of because we ran out of mulch and so I just used the uh, animal bedding for now um, to help retain the moisture and keep the heat off the soil. My garlics are doing pretty good. Uh, these are the ones that um, I planted out of my pantry that were starting to sprout. So they're doing pretty good for just uh, being something I saved out of the pantry. <clears throat> and these are some of my other carrots. Um, I had direct seeded these, the other ones I grew in a milk jug. And you can see the difference in size and everything. And these were really stunted for a while until I gave them fertilizer. Um, and they're doing really good now. Still not quite as big as the ones behind us, but they're catching up. And then I also have celery planted in here as well. Along these beds here, they're along my fence on, on the north side. I have a container of chamomile. I harvested quite a bit, and it's going to allow it to put out even more blossoms. The bees and things really love the thing. Um, so we got that. We have some more potatoes. These are a little um, later on than the other ones, but they'll fill out nicely in a little while. And then we have some lettuce. I have a pot of weeds. <laughs> I'm waiting for a certain herb uh, to grow a little bit more and then I'll put it in here. A goji berry and then we have some thyme and some tarragon. And then I'll put lemongrass back in the pot where I grew it last year after it grows a bit more. Main garden entrance. The flowers are starting to come along nicely. Starting to get some petunias that are starting to sprout. Uh, my snapdragons, they're forming flower heads on them. And I'm sure my straw flowers and asters are getting pretty close to blooming as well. My roses that I transplanted over here against the fence because they're more of a climbing rose. They're doing pretty good. Beautiful pink bloom over there and the red bloom over there. They're doing really good. And then the chamomile. I planted my squash back there so I can climb up the fence. I've got quite a few varieties of climbing things and so I have to make room in some other spots. My herb beds come along pretty good. Um, you can see the valerians bloomed and then my corn flowers, bachelor buttons, uh, they've bloomed. I've got the red, white, and blue thing going on here, which was the point, but I actually have some white bachelor buttons. Oh, they're tucked back in here. 
right there. So it was supposed to be red, white, and blue bachelor buttons. Um, but they're doing pretty good. But yeah, the valerian gets really, really tall. It's not actually at its tallest height. Um, it's been way up there before. So it's still kind of short compared to other years, but the bees love the valerian when it flowers. So um, it's fun to have this plant. My yarrow's just starting to form uh, flower heads. So it'll be nice to see the colors that come back this year. Um, it's a pastel yarrow. So it's a bunch of different colors like white and yellow and pink uh, pastel colors. So it's really, really pretty. So maybe the next time I shoot a video, it'll have opened up and flowered. My petunias are starting to flower. My chives are about done. The flowers are just about done. It's time to get ready to deadhead them. Velvet Queen Sunflower and I have more that are growing in there. I always start my seeds in a container first and then when they're seedlings I transplant into the soil because we have uh, cats and other things that will actually dig the soil up so if I have seeds in it the seeds get disturbed so I just start every, just about everything in a container first and then transplant into the ground once the seedlings are a good size. <clears throat> My echinacea is starting to put out uh, uh, flower heads. I see some going there. I've got quite a few varieties in here. Um, I really try to have diversity in my garden. And it takes years um, when you're doing it on a budget. But we're getting there. So that'll be pretty. This will be the purple. And I also have uh, a pink and a yellow. At least that's the colors that I remember planting in here. We'll see what they actually are when... Uh, they put out their flower heads this year. My lavender's putting out its flower spikes. This beautiful plant here is actually sage. Um, it's really, really pretty when it goes to flower. I have a couple bumblebees on it right now. So, um, thankfully I don't need any sage right now this year. Um, because all my sages have flowered. And basically uh, for sage and some other herbs, once they flower, you don't want to harvest them. Um, they're done for the year, so to speak. But um, the flowers are great for pollinators and they're very pretty. I have my back black bachelor button back here. Um, it's really pretty. The, it, the color is stated as black, but it's like more of a maroon very dark dark red it's really pretty <clears throat> my flax has a couple of blooms on it they're very tiny interesting blooms and then my bronze fennel <clears throat> all right so this is my other bed here that I had all these flowers that were self seeding from last year you see I let just let some go here because I'm gonna let this fill out this is all borage right here but uh, I had all these petunias, uh, not petunias, these are all bachelor buttons here that self-seeded from last year. So I just let them go because I uh, wanted a spot for lots of pollinating flowers. And since they grew there on their own, I was like, well, we'll just leave them. And then I have a lot more flowers along the edge there because I'm doing cut flowers this year uh, for the farmer's market. So we're going to have lots and lots of flowers in uh, intermingled with our vegetable garden this year. And so I have lots of flowers, uh, marigolds, coxcomb, asters, straw flowers. I have some zinnias in some other places and some dahlias. So yeah, we're having lots of flowers this year. On the back end there, those are my loofahs. They're doing really good. And then I have a couple strawberry plants right there. Uh, let's see. And then this end, we have watermelon. And this end, cucamelon, or uh, uh, Mexican gherkin. So, and then petunias, and eventually the mulch you see here will be here. Uh, like I said, we ran out of mulch, uh, and my husband's truck broke down, so we haven't been able to go get more mulch right now. So, we did the best we can with what we had. Okay, so like I said, this is a bunch of borage here that uh, has self seeded from last year and we're going to let this fill out this area because I actually have uh, tomatoes that I'm planting on this side along this fence here and borage and tomatoes are very good companion plants so I got that there and then up there I have uh, some uh, coriander and some buckwheat and it's really really pretty 
Um, you can see the dainty little flowers. I really like the dainty flowers because that's just so neat how tiny flowers are. So yeah, I have scarlet buckwheat and then um, coriander. <clears throat> like I said, I do have some tomatoes planted here. Um, these ones are mortgage lifter. I'll be planting some blueberry tomatoes and uh, some other things over there. In this area, we have some potatoes that are starting to come up that we had over here years ago. But if you don't get all your potatoes up out of the ground, you'll end up with potatoes coming up eventually again. So we'll see how these turn out this year. Last year, the ones that were over here didn't do very well. They were crummy. So we'll see. We've got the poles up for my other tomatoes. My Hungarian heart tomatoes are going to go here. Um, going to be get, growing a lot of tomatoes this year because our family uses a lot of tomato products. So I'm trying to um, eliminate the need to go to the store to buy tomato products and uh, grow our own. So there's 16 poles here, or not 16, sorry. There's 12 poles here in um I've got other ones growing in other spots, so I think I'm growing 16 of these variety of tomatoes, the Hungarian hearts. Uh, we'll see how many I can actually fit into my garden once I start planting. My tansy's still growing tall, and, and uh, this is why my husband built the container around it. Um, if you've been following my video uh, videos, you can see how small the tansy uh, root system down is down below it's it's only about a quarter of the size of this uh, uh, container here uh, the starts but um, when it starts growing it fills this thing out completely and uh, it'll actually start falling over into the garden beds and into the walkway if we did not contain it with these pallets my other flowers are doing pretty good these are hollyhocks um, I also have some coxcomb towards the back. A lot of self-seeded uh, cilantro and some dill. And we just let that go because that's great companion plant stuff. Um, and the flowers, once it goes to seed, uh, the pollinators really, really like. Uh, I have uh, beans growing up this side of the trellis here. Um, these ones are triophano violetto beans. I have some oregon, or er, oregon. <laughs> oregano it's too early in the morning I have oregano growing um, that's a second year plant and you can see it's just really lush and the cilantro behind it Wow <laughs> but yeah I have uh, beans growing here and then on this side I'm growing some uh, squash so that will fill up this side of the trellis but you can see all the dill and the cilantro in this bed it's pretty much all self seeded then I planted some calendula I also have some sweet peas. They haven't really taken off yet. Uh, the weather's been really wonky. It hasn't been quite hot and it's been more of the cool. So I'm hoping they'll take off when the weather starts perking back up again. <clears throat> but yeah, a lot of dill in this bed. So I'm hoping to see the swallowtail butterfly caterpillar this year with all this dill in here. <laughs> And then you see I still have plants and flats, uh, beans and things like that that I'm waiting to transplant. <clears throat> this is pretty much what I have left of jugs. I have these here and these ones I reseeded. So these aren't my original jugs. These are ones that I started growing new stuff in. I have more sunflowers, more Swiss chard. I'm trying to get the blue daisy to go, it's, grow. It's really, really pretty. It has not grown yet, but anyways, so I have these jugs, I have those jugs, and then those there, those are my tomato jugs. That's what I have left of jugs to get into the garden. I planted my peanuts here, along with some zinnias, and then um, I have my Kentucky Wonder pole beans growing on this side of the trellis, and then on this side is uh, squash. Uh, the other trellis back there, I thought that was squash, but no, that's Japanese cucumber. So, it's like, where'd my cucumber go? So this one is the squash. And then you can see my um, butter lettuce, really pretty. Look at the heads on it, it just looks really scrumptious. And I have some onions um, and some beets. These are golden beets in here. More carrots, look at the foliage on those carrots. Aren't they just gorgeous? I'm just so amazed. 
and then um, my sunflowers. I have four or five different sunflowers I'm growing in my garden this year. Um, I just I want a nice diversity of things in my garden this year, so I'm growing a lot of different stuff. I thought I'd show you guys what's really making a difference in my garden uh, this year. I have two fertilizers here. Uh, the one that I really, really enjoy is this Trifecta Plus. This is from MI Gardener, but uh, this stuff is like gold. <laughs> it's kind of neat. It's in a gold package, uh, but it is seriously really good stuff. Um, it's fertilizers and micronutrients and micro and beneficial bacteria and fungi. This stuff is good stuff, and that's why my plants are doing so good. When I can't get this, because like I said, it's a hot commodity, and he mixes it himself, um, so they run out a lot. So when I cannot get this, um, I get the next best thing for my area, and that is this. This is Miracle Grow, and I generally do not use Miracle Grow products because they are a chemical company. They're well known for their synthetic fertilizers and synthetic pest control and, you know, that thing. But I needed something that was as good as this. And so uh, I looked at the miracle Grow, and you have to look at the edibles, and it's got a very, very high uh, number as well. Um, very well balanced, high numbers. Um, my garden is devoid of nutrients. I have very crummy uh, nutrient retention in my soil. So I needed something that had high numbers to put the nutrients back in. So if I couldn't get that, I got this one. And again, it's the edible variety because you can get the ones that are all purpose or flowers and the numbers are nowhere near the numbers of this. So like I said, I usually do not recommend miracle Grow, um, but I checked with this and it is, uh, you know, it's OMRI listed so it's been you know tested that it does follow the organic requirements so if you can't get that get that so this is another one of my other tomato beds um, I have black trims and uh, oh, I can't remember what the other one it's are right now uh, let's see if I can find one do, 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 do. Oh, these are my blueberry cherries here. I have my black trims and my blueberry cherries and Cherokee purples on the other side. That's the other thing is my Cherokee purples are on the other side. Um, but the cilantro has all self-seeded. I have mustard that's self-seeded, calendula self-seeded. Smoke bomb did not self-seed. She just gets in the way. <laughs> oh, goodness. Uh, but yeah, so this bed is just full of, of stuff I didn't plant this year. I planned last year. So um, it'll be nice to see those tomatoes grow. I'm really looking forward to trying those new tomatoes because so many people rave about them. And I was like, well, you know, we'll see if everybody's right or if my tastes are different and I like what I usually grow. And this is my other bed. I have started planting it. I still have a lot more to go. You can see I have a lot of empty space. Uh, I got my beans in here. I have coxcomb in here. There's a coxcomb there. My marshmallow plant is doing very, very well. Um, and then I have some mints that I potted up for the farmer's market. And then uh, this bed over here um, started with beets. And then I've got some onions. I had Chinese broccoli in here, but it bolted. So that's why I'm growing some more Swiss chard. It's gonna go right next to this Swiss chard. You see it's doing really, really well. Uh, and more sunflowers. These are Mongolian giant sunflowers. And I actually have them attached to the trellis because of our winds here. Um, they would just get blown over and wouldn't have a chance to grow as tall as they need to grow. So they are attached to my pea trellis. And uh, I don't know if you can see my pea trellis here, but it's doing very good. This is the outside of it here. But uh, see those purple pea pods? Aren't they gorgeous? And then the beautiful pea blossoms. So it's kind of like my favorite pea just because um, it adds a bunch of color. Um, beautiful purple colors. Um, 
that you wouldn't normally think you'd see from peas. So you got the beautiful green and then the pop of purple color in it. It's just really, really gorgeous. <clears throat> and I forgot to show you guys over here my grapevine. I'm not sure if I'm actually going to get grapes this year or not. Um, I'm going to add some more fertilizer to it to help it uh, recover from being transplanted. There are grapes growing on it, but uh, the plant itself is not really that healthy right now. So I'm probably going to add some uh, fertilizer to it and see how that goes. Okay, over here is my other garden patch that I had. Last year I grew uh, tomatoes over here for uh, Baker Creek. This year I'm growing corn, lots of corn for uh, uh, the farmer's market and what doesn't sell at the farmer's market will be for decoration. This is a dry corn. This is a uh, painted mountain dry corn. Um, so a lot of people would use it for decoration for uh, around the fall. It's really pretty. And then because it's a dry corn, uh, you grind it for cornmeal. So um, you can see I got a lot of weeds going on over here. We don't have any mulch or anything down. And so I have to hold this by hand uh, to get the weeds back out of here. Thankfully, they're generally pretty easy to get out. Just a little bit of work with a hoe. Um, and they can come out, but uh, corn does fine with weeds. I mean, if you look at the uh, fields, a lot of times you'll see lots of weeds growing up with the corn, so it's not like I have to keep this pristine in order for my corn to grow. Um, another thing about this patch is I'm doing the three sisters uh, method uh, with uh, corn, and I also have uh, beans, I have not planted the squash yet. It's not warm enough uh, to get uh, the squash that I want in the ground yet. Um, and I'm waiting for the beans to, to grow. You want your corn to be four to six inches tall before you plant your beans. And then you want your beans to be about four inches tall before you plant your squash. It's a succession planting. That way the previous crop has had time to grow before the next one takes over. Um, also with corn, uh, in case people didn't know, it looks like my corn is planted in rows, and it kind of is, but it's also planted in groups. Corn does best in groups. So um, there's a central group here of uh, six corn plants, and then right next to it is another six corn plants, and so on. Um, it pollinates better that way when it's in a group than just a straight line. And this is a catnip here. Again, because I have cats, I have to keep it protected from my cats. And uh, I know the cage looks a little huge and whatever, but it's what I had to work with. So, um, And then right next to that is borage. I did have sweet potatoes here. Um, I don't know if the camera can pick them up. I can see them, but uh, I have sweet potatoes. But I don't think they like the spot. We had put our... Uh, uh, bedding material out, that was out of the coop this fall we had put it in here and then tilled it in in the rows and I think it might be just too much for the uh, sweet potatoes so they're not really doing too well um, but the corn and the borage and everything else likes it so that's fine I took a minute to look to see if I could see any beans coming up yet and I actually do have a bean coming up Oops, sorry. I actually have a bean coming up. I also have a tomato. That's probably from last year's, uh, um, when I was growing the tomatoes over here. There's a tomato plant right there. And I'm just going to let that grow. I might bring a stake over here and put that up. Um, and there's actually another one right there. So kind of cool. But yeah, I have beans that are starting to grow. So probably about another week after those beans get a little taller is when I'll put the squash. Okay, so I haven't given you guys a video update of the chickens in a while. So we're going to go into the chicken run and I will give you an update on the chickens. Alright, so these are all the chickens. We got the gray ones back there. Those are uh, sapphire gems or blue Plymouth rocks. They're really pretty. These are my older hens here. They think I'm bringing them food. We got the 
uh, Brahmas and the Isa Browns. Brownie there, she's a Aracana. You can see some of them are kind of bare because the roosters in here uh, are getting a little uh, spring fever with their breeding. So we have, uh, this is our oldest rooster, this is Red. And then we have his son Henry back there. Hi Henry. And then this is his brother Dilbert. So yeah, we hatched these boys last year um, ourselves. And they also have a sister around here, I don't see her, uh, uh, Lucille. Out of four eggs that we hatched, uh, we only got three live chicks. And then all the young, young ones, except for the few that came out to say hello, are tucked back there underneath the elderberry bushes. <clears throat> when we expanded this run to include the elderberry bushes this year, the chickens really enjoyed it. <clears throat> so you see we have quite a collection. I even see an egg over there too. Um, but yeah, we have uh, nine different breeds of chickens represented in our flock this year. Like I said, we're all about diversity. So, yep, very diverse. So that's what's going on in the garden and on the homestead. I thank you so much for watching everybody. And if you want to continue to follow the journey, please make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit the like button on the video. That way uh, you're shown more videos as they come out. And I just thank you so much for being a participant of my journey. I hope that this can inspire you to start your own or continue on your own if maybe you uh, got stuck somewhere. But I hope that no matter wherever you are, that you are wonderfully blessed. Bye-bye.